Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a little outdoor painting. So I've got this product to review. It is a Peshad box. I've never had a Peshad box before because they are pricey. This is an affordable one though, so I'm hoping that it could be something that if you're in the market for a Peshad box, if you don't want to make something yourself and you don't want to spend $500, you can find something that will uh, that will meet your price point and suit your needs. This uh, product was sent to me from the company Meaden. You're probably familiar with Meaden if you've ever ordered empty watercolor tins or half pans or even some uh, ceramic palettes on Amazon. I've purchased several things from Meaden in the past and always been very pleased with their products. Um, their palettes are wonderful. My husband got me this set of pastel drawers for them for Christmas and it is just, it's every bit as nice as the expensive ones that I purchased from an art supply store. I, at a fraction of the price. So I was really excited to try this out. And I will have a 15% discount code for the meeting Meaden website in the video description if you're looking to purchase anything. Um, but this is going to be an honest review. You'll be able to see whether it's too cumbersome for you or just perfect for what you need. And hopefully it'll help you make an informed decision or it might even give you an idea of how you might DIY your own. Uh, I'm here for it. If you would like to like me to do a video showing you my different plein air painting setups, my um, watercolor setup, my pastel and oil setup with a French easel, comparing them, let me, let me know. I can do something like that in a future video if that's something you're interested in. Everybody's different. We're all gonna like different things. Something that's perfect for you might not be perfect for me. So just, this is informational, it's a review. And if you have any questions, you can of course leave them in the comments below. In the first clip, we are going to go to my little paint date yesterday. I went painting with a couple friends and I created these two paintings. So I'll show you a couple clips from that. And then we're gonna go in the backyard and I'll show you how to set this up and you can see if it's a pain in the butt or if it's just perfect. So pain in the butt or perfect. That should be my series, a series of reviews. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get to it. I've just set up the paint box here on the meat and easel and I'm noticing that it is really kind of flimsy. I can't seem to tighten it down hard enough to get rid of that rock, uh, the rocking. I'm hoping that it won't be a problem, but that's one thing that I did notice. I've got a, just a trash bag on the bottom of the easel. Um, you could put a sandbag on there if you wanted to weight it. Uh, it is windy, but I don't think I'm going to have that much of a problem. Uh, but I will update you once I've been painting on this a bit got one picture finished and the box held up pretty well. It was a little wiggly but honestly I didn't notice it as I was painting and I think I can remedy that with a screwdriver at home. Um, this worked out great having the rag in my box and the water cup in my box. I didn't have any spillage and taping the palette paper to the, um, the little drawer pull out thing here worked out great too. So, so far so good. One of the great things about painting is the friends that you can make. Hi, Karen! You want to show what you're painting or would you rather not? I can. Oh, that's so pretty. Watercolor, very nice. And micron pen. Great shadows. Nice. Awesome. And we have Angela Clark of Clark Fine Art. How's it going? Good. Cool. Can I see what you're painting? Oh, uh, yeah. We're just okay. getting started. Awesome. Yeah, I gave her sketchy directions, so she ended up somewhere else. <laughs> but. We're having a good time and we're going to keep on painting. Okay, so we're in the backyard and I'm going to show you how to set up this meat and Peshad box. I have everything right here. This does come with a bag for the easel, uh, for the tripod rather, and for the Peshad box. So I just slid the um, tripod in here. Honestly, I'm not big on the bags, but it does have a shoulder strap if you wanted to. And so does the bag to carry the, uh, the wooden box. So I'm just going to open it up as normal and then you've got these fast release leg clips here. I wouldn't do both of them just because it's going to be too tall I think once you get the Peshad box in. So I'm just going to do the, you'll do the higher one. It just looks a little bit more substantial and this way you can see it in real time. All right and then I have already mounted the fast release plate to the bottom of the box. So if you look at this here, um, this plate, this uh, it comes with an Allen wrench so you can put this on and this will come on the, on whatever tripod you have, you'll actually probably have some sort of fast release plate that you can actually hook onto the bottom of the Peshad box. So if you already have an easel, you're set. There's um, like a the quarter inch thumb screw type uh, hole in there just like your camera would have. So it would hook right to your 
right to your tripod. You want a sturdy tripod though because this is heavier than a camera so you want to make sure that it's going to accommodate it and not you know topple your your box off. So this is already set so I'm going to set this on my tripod and so what you do there's a little knob on the side of this tripod Ooh, tip over there uh, that you want to ex screw to, uh, uh, to open it up and then you're just going to set the box on and this is a little a little awkward so if you do have a friend to help you that would be that would be helpful and then you just turn the knob so this requires a little bit of strength if you're not somebody that can like kind of scoot down and um, hook this on it might be a little bit of a pain I suppose you could do this at home but then you'd have to transport transport everything um, all together and I don't know how that would go. I think you would run the risk of maybe damaging the box or the tripod if you do that. But there we go. So we don't have too much uh, movement here. When you saw the clip from me painting outdoors, I was um, I didn't have a screwdriver with me and the top of the tripod where it hooked to the tripod was not screwed down really well. The screws were loose. So what I did was I found, I just took a regular little screwdriver. This happens to be a little portable one that I can keep with my stuff but um, just used a little a little Phillips screwdriver and I tightened those screws and everything was fine after that. So on the clip when I was painting outdoors, you would have seen that that was moving around a bit for me. So then I'm just gonna open this up so it's facing, let me turn it so it's facing you. You gotta make sure everything's tightened down. There is a lever here to tighten down. A couple different levels, levers you're gonna need to tighten down and make sure you have it exactly where you want it. And then unhook it, open it up, and then you will want to loosen up these knobs on the side and then you can like kind of put that as far back as you want it i'm not really suave with it yet because it's fairly new to me and then you've got a little brush ledge that goes over this side and then you've got this palette piece that comes out. And what I do actually is I just tape a piece of palette paper to it. So then I can just undo that and throw it in the trash. There's a little spot. I'm wondering if you can see that uh, on the bottom of the easel where there's a little hook where you can hook a, uh, a sandbag or I just like hang a little trash can. So on the bottom of that center post, there's just a little metal hook. And that's really handy if you have like a, just like a shopping plastic bag or something you can keep for trash. That's great. You can even throw take a piece of string and tie it to like a gallon jug of water and you could tie it there that way if it's really windy it'll help keep it stable and then in here I'll turn it this little side comes off and then you can fit two canvases and you can and they won't touch each other so you can do an 8 by 10 and a 9 by 12 and these are the ones that I painted on location and you can just put them in there. The little one goes on the bottom ledge, because I couldn't figure this out at first. How are we keeping the paints from touching each other? The little one goes on the bottom face up, and then the top one, the nine by 12, can rest on that ledge there. And I'm thinking you could go even a smidgen bigger than nine, so maybe if you had like um, one of those sketchbooks that are a little bit wider, that would probably work. Now I'm wondering if a sketchbook will fit in there. I did bring this Hana Mule one here. Uh, you know what, it's just a little too tight. I think if you had a skinnier sketchbook if it was narrower than eight inches you'd be able to put that on the bottom ledge and probably fit it in there but nothing too thick so just kind of keep that in mind if you're a watercolor painter you could get a 9 by 12 and a 8 by 10 piece of uh, masonite and you could tape your paper to it or you could probably find a smaller watercolor block to fit in there just fine so I'm sure you find a, a pretty good workaround I don't know if you necessarily need something like this for watercolor but um, but you may wish to stand because you can fold this flat if you wanted to for watercolor you just undo the knobs and let it go let it go flat like that so definitely something you could do um, so to adjust the thing that holds your canvas what you're gonna do is um, there's a couple knobs on the back. You just unscrew them and then you can move this part up or down until you get just the size that you need and the height that you want. And there's, um, you can have stretched or canvas panels. I don't know if you could transport stretch canvas in here. Probably one 8x10 stretch canvas because of the thickness of it. I don't think you could do more than one. And then if you want to paint right out to the edge, I recommend using these little metal tabs. And then once you have it, how you want it just tighten up the screws in the back and then you're good to go and you can slide it back and forth if you need to get to where 
you know, those are covering up, but it's very easy to adjust. And then you've got the space for your palette that goes up to the edge, which is kind of nice as opposed to a French easel where you've got your drawer, but your palette goes on top of your drawer unless you want to hold it. So this way you can actually lay your brushes over here as you're using them. You can let, you can rest them there. I like to do that so I know which ones I've used, so I know which ones I have to bring inside and wash when I'm done. Let's see, I'm going to move this a little closer to the camera here so you can see a little bit better. There are dividers in there, but I have taken one of the dividers out to make it a little bit easier for me to use, but I'm just going to show you really quick what the dividers look like. So there's a divider here. I'll just take this right out. And you can put another divider right here if you want to. But you could take both of the dividers out if that's more convenient for you for what you have to store. If you're storing, like a, if you're trying to fit a larger flat watercolor palette in there, maybe you want to put your watercolor block there and a watercolor palette. You probably would want to take this out. So you could definitely use it for different stuff and for different configurations. But I wanted to use this. Um, this is a little travel palette that I picked up on Amazon. It's um, you know, it fits in like that and you can have paint in there as well. But I really wanted that, that a cup. This palette did not work out well for me. I didn't really like it. Um, I might try it again. Oh, now it's on the ground. But I put a paint puck in here. This little expandable cup is perfect. I used this and I filled it up with water once and I was able to do both of those paintings without it being too, uh, the water being too dirty. But it's not going to fit in there unless I take out one of the dividers. So this fits out. This fits great. I also throw a cloth rag in there, like an old washcloth in there, and it, it doesn't blow away. It just works really well. And then to pack it up, I can come collapse it in. And the finish on this is really nice. I mean, you're going to get paint on it. It's a it's a paint box, but um, but I think it I think it works really well. And if you have this open like this, you just have more options. I think for storing stuff. I kept one divider in just to keep my paint brushes together. Now the this is just gonna fit your long handled paint brushes but I did have some long handled paint brushes that were too long for this just to let you know. Um, you know it's not gonna fit your larger long handled paint brushes are probably gonna be too long and you would need to go kitty corner with the brushes. And what else did I want to show you? Oh there's a paper towel holder which I didn't use because I found just having a rag in there was fine but if you want to have a paper towel holder or maybe you want to use this at home and uh, and leave it set up. That's fine too. You might wish to have the paper towel holder. So this is what this thing is. If you, let's tip that up again. That's a very weird angle. There we go. So this is, this thing right here is a paper towel holder. I know it looks really strange. It looks like some, I don't know, handmade toy or something. Uh, so what you do is you just feed the um, little thing down the paper towel tube. So you're getting real time how long this thing takes to set up. And then the paper towel will just hang on that on that rail. And then the rail, these little these little blocks just go right like that. You could also just throw a towel over that bar if you wanted to. But and actually, you know, I'm just picturing the breeze coming in just blowing the piece of paper towels everywhere. I'll tip that down again so you can see. So I could see that happening as well. Obviously, you just kind of shift it over to, I'll only try to see if I can flatten that out a little bit for you. Oops, I got a little tangle in my... Yep, yeah, that's that's me, not them. I tangled up the, uh, the cord a little bit. But yeah, you can adjust it. Yeah. That's fine. But I didn't use that when I went out painting. I just thought the rag was made more sense just having it in there. There's also this piece of wood, which I cannot for life me figure out what it's for. So if you know what this is for and you're watching, just please let me know. I, I don't have any idea what this possibly could be for because it doesn't have like a little divot on it. There's a little divot in here so that when you close this up, that hole will catch on that and keep the drawer from falling over. But this, I don't know what it's for. I don't know at all. I don't know. What can it hook to? Oh, it kind of hooks on the, it almost seems like it would hook on the outside, but I don't know what you would use it for on the outside. So, if you know, let me know. Because I don't know. Did you put it on the front? I have no idea what that piece is for, so you'll have to let me know if you know out in a out in YouTube land. 
it just to make it look pretty? I, I have no idea. Maybe if you're not using the paper towel, I don't know why you'd use that. I honestly have no idea what that's for. Um, here is the bag that comes with it. And this will fit the Peshad box, but I find it easier to just hang onto it by the handle. But this does have a shoulder strap if that is convenient for you. Um, everybody's different. I like that there's a lot of options. This is nice. Um, I think the advantage over a French easel is the, the weight of it. It's a lot lighter and you're carrying it in two parts. And if you don't need an easel, you can just get the box and use the easel you already have, or you can get the kit. I will link everything down below and you can compare the prices. Sometimes they have different colors on sale because I think they have this in a lighter finish as well, which you may prefer. Um, so you can customize it to however you need it. Is it for you? I don't know, only you can answer that, but it is very well made. It's very easy to set up. Um, I've already got paint on it, but I'm sure you can keep it looking nicer if that was important to you. But it is much cheaper than, say, the Gorilla Painter box or some other Peshad boxes out on the market. And um, it's high quality, so I wouldn't have any qualms recommending this over a more expensive version. And if you would like a video of me comparing my different plein air setups, please let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to film something for you if it would be helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.